haiti its dawn of progress after years in a night of revolution chapter one sargasso and flying fish by j dryden Couser. this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by larry wilson for the first two days out of new york harbor flocks of herring gulls followed us and occasionally an odd robin and a pair of goldfinches appeared but after hatteras we paused and the sea was calmer the gulls left us and flying fish took their place stationed at the bow i watched them dart out of the foam and skim sometimes a few feet often many yards at night i took the same post and the phosphorescent stars of the sea shone very green against the yellow constellations above by the third day ever-increasing quantities of sargasso weed appeared and floated past torn from beds along tropical coasts these bits of weed act as the shelter for multifarious forms of aquatic life which live as long as the weed lives and die when it finally decays and so although no sign of bird or other life appeared above the water surface we were surrounded every moment by thousands of individuals of dozens of species our ship was the advance of the american government controlled panama r r steamship company which operates the service between new york haiti and panama two steamers run to panama via port of prince haiti three are exclusively for haitian ports while the others do not stop at haiti en route to panama besides the panama line there is the dutch line of boats which runs from new york to haiti on regular sailings but aside from these two there are no other lines which regularly run ships to haiti and so the quickest way of traveling from haiti to another of the west indies is via panama coming south the first land appeared on the fourth day when the lighthouse of san salvador renamed waitling's island by the british showed the northern point of land long before the rest of the flat surface was visible bird rock the fortune islands and castle island were passed during the next twelve hours and finally the high mountains of eastern cuba were twenty miles off our starboard before these were out of sight the peak of mole st nicholas haiti arose on the port bow but we were by no means yet at port au prince our destination for it is a seven-hour sail from this point to the harbor in the lower part of the bay the bay itself is over one hundred miles long and in the center of it is the island of Gonave, ten by forty miles to which all convicts were exiled from haiti in the french days and many of whose present inhabitants are descendants of these exiles after we had passed Gonave, the mountain ranges on both sides became very close and we could see the smoke of many fires high up on their slopes these fires we later found out were those of the charcoal burners who play an important role on the island the charcoal is obtained by placing the wood which has been gathered under a covering of earth in such a way as to eliminate the undesired gases and leave the charcoal after sufficient time the earth is removed and the charcoal carried for miles into town on the backs of burrows charcoal is used entirely in haiti for kitchen fuel of the fires we saw in the hills all were probably not those of charcoal burners as it is the common thing for the natives to burn off a section of land which they desire to use and to ascribe the fire to spontaneous combustion at last the very colored lights of port-au-prince peeped forth from among the foothills on the right and we followed the channel in by alignment with two large red range lights one on the top of the cathedral and the other on fort national the beauty of coming into port-au-prince is by daylight when not unlike sorrento it shows a background of two thousand eight hundred foot mountains rising behind and with a pellucid green sea stretching out from the town a haitian launch came alongside for the custom officials to board our passports were taken to be kept for overnight and recorded and we were then allowed to proceed to the dock which is at the end of a long pier jutting out from the land as we spun along to the house where we were to visit we went over streets smoother and wider than all but a few in the united states 
these streets throughout most of the town were put down under contract with an american firm in nineteen fourteen before american occupation of haiti and are of excellent quality from the business district we came into the champ de mar a laid-out park with a bronze of dessalines the founder of haitian independence in the center and at the end a grandstand from which to watch the sports or national festivities next to the champ de mar is the new palace of the president of haiti it is now at a stage of near completion and one wing is already occupied by the president and his family this building is the fourth palace to be built on the same site one of the others having been set on fire and destroyed and the other two ruined through explosions in the latter cases the president had been unable to trust anyone with the keeping of the national supply of ammunition and was forced to keep it in his own palace so that in both cases the presidents were killed by means of their own powder on the lower side of the palace are the marine barracks and the gendarme caserne opposite one another and above the champ de mar is the marine brigade headquarters at this point starts the residential section of the town for both wealthy haitians and americans and other foreigners we rode over narrow quaint streets after passing the marine headquarters until we came to avenue christophe and our house of old french style and with peaked roof which was at one time used as the presidential palace most of the houses of port-au-prince are of this old french style and show few traces of the original spanish around all the better houses are dense tropical growths with mangoes oranges and guanavina or sour sap hanging over the porches many of the yards have also one or two royal palms with their great white trunks reaching over fifty feet and with leaves clustered at the top at the very tip of the tree's trunk is the heart for which many trees are cut down as heart of palm is one of the delicacies of the tropics in the country districts both the royal and coconut palm are common the two are somewhat similar but can be easily told apart by the crooked growth of the latter and also its darker and rougher trunk the first morning after our arrival was cloudy which was very unusual for throughout the year in port-au-prince the mornings are almost invariably clear so is the remainder of the day for the six months during the dry season but in the wet season it regularly rains a downpour for about two hours late each afternoon november is the beginning of the dry season so for a couple of weeks after our arrival it was still occasionally rain for a few moments a day but we missed having any of the truly tropical rains which during the summer flood the streets and sweep all before them while the winter is for port-au-prince and southern haiti the dry season the conditions are exactly reversed in the northern half of the republic there the wet season commences in november to last for six months until next summer when all becomes dry again and so there is never a time in haiti when half of the island is not being well watered and the fruit and crops in season End of Haiti is Dawn of Progress After Years and a Night of Revolution Chapter 1 Sargasso and Flying Fish by J. Dryden Cruiser